Hello and welcome back to the channel, it's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One. Today we're going to be looking at a three-phase commercial job we've got going on. There is going to be some other content around this created by some very famous YouTube individuals, far more famous than myself, and I'm sure they're going to do it justice, but I wanted to run through some of the um, protective equipment that we're installing on this one, explaining how it works, running through some of the manuals, talking about some of the unique features that those products offered, specifically around SPDs. Just spin you around, you'll see I'm in the office now and we've got this pretty beefy, um, oops, zoom out rather than in, pretty beefy Hager board. So it's a 24-way TPM board. You see it's got a nice long cable entry um, in through the bottom there. So your main switch sits in here. We've got the SPD kit coming as well. I'm going to show that on the video. We'll maybe do a little time lapse of all that coming together so you can see how it is wired in. Um, and then we're going to drop it out onto site, run through some of the installation of it and explain about pollution factors, why we've selected it, what exactly we're doing with the install. Um, so yeah, we'll go into more detail on that out on site. But I just wanted to give you a quick look inside it. This is the little box of bits for your main switch. You'll notice there it is only a three-pole main switch. So we'll get to out on the video. That is because we have some UPS systems installed off this board. And it's really important that you don't disconnect the neutral to those systems by accident or when you're doing some kind of shutdown. So we tend to leave the neutral link in rather than it being through an isolating switch when you have those kind of systems in place. And, and I know with your TNCS, the neutral and the earth are combined at the TX. We all know this, but often I always try and prefer to leave a point of isolation on every board for all four poles. And that's just to ensure that when you're working on a final circuit, you know for certain if you've turned that main switch off that all sources of electrical energy are disconnected barring the earthing system which is always you know if you've got a fault current external for the insulation things can start to happen so you do need to be mindful of that as well but we'll jump to the desk we'll have a look through the instructions we'll talk about them this is the labeling kit you get with it obviously we won't be using that we'll be doing all of our own labels anyway but as always it's nice to see they do come with some labels the spine board's pretty consistent with the whole Hager range You'll see it's got the glass door there and um, the nice opening for the SPD kit and main switch, which we'll speak about when that gets installed. You can see in there that it is dielectric tested at 3.4 kilovolts with an earth bond test and it's been dated for that test having been done. And yet yeah, just your typical three phase spine board. I know for some of you out there who are working as apprentices, you might not have come across this. We've not shown it in a much detail on our channel. We have done some three phase commercial jobs but we haven't been able to film lots of it. It's always difficult getting permission. We do quite a bit of commercial work, um, but you know, you can't always get that approval. This is different, we can. And behemoth box that it comes in. It's a big old box. We've got all the other boxes down there for the protective equipment, all the giveaway stuff waiting to be posted out. I need to get on with that. But yeah, we'll have a look through the manual. I might cut that into the end of the video and we'll jump straight out to site. I don't know how I'll edit this up. As I said, there'll be some proper big YouTuber who's going to be covering this exact same job and perhaps they might be installing that out on site. Let's have a look in the manual. So we'll start off with the main manual. You can see it's an Invicta 3 board. It's giving you a diagram of some of the tools you might need. In fairness, they look like pre prehistoric icons. They need to update those. Um, but yeah, it just gives you a general run through of how the front door opens. So you'll see you've got your slotted screw on the front to open the glass door. The hinges can be removed, oh sorry, disconnected you can disconnect the door from the actual front cover which makes it easier for getting it on and off when you're working inside the board um, it does say that all products must be installed by suitably competent electricians which is nice and it must comply with the regs um, and that's both wiring regs and the electricity at work regulations and to prevent overheating and from loose connections the installer shall check connections are tightened to the torque levels stated so they all like to reference that uh, then again, you've got your fixing points on the back, and it tells you how to achieve those with a PosiDrive PZ2. So you can uh, fix these, and you can put them on a, a surface like a wall or some steel um, sheeting, or if you're using containment strut and such, you can mount them directly on there, which we're going to be doing in this video. And you can see here, you've got your bottom entry plate, so the gland plate, so you can remove that. Um, to cut your glands away from the board and it actually shows that there in the picture and obviously that's to avoid getting debris all over the spine board if you start cutting into the top of it with all of the little shards flying everywhere never a good idea 
Uh, it shows you about the cable entry plate at the bottom, that you can remove it and sit on your trunk in if you wish, obviously with your Paxil in between or whatever else you're going to use. Uh, you see they've mentioned that there, the Paxil in laminated sheet. And again, how to fit your MCBs or RCBAs with the torque values, and you'll see it actually gives a minimum and maximum range. It's not a preset um, target. There is a bit of tolerance in there, um, so you need to make sure you're using an appropriate torque driver that can achieve those settings. And some of the weirer ones um, fall down on the TPN stuff because they don't go high enough, which is why we use Weir. I think Weir have since brought products out that do cover the whole range, but you know we're in the Weir system now. And then you've got your ability to number your outgoing ways on the bus bar stack, which is always handy. So you can give yourself a circuit reference while you're inside the board. And if you want, you can use a pencil when you're installing your label sheet. I'd never recommend that, but it's in the instructions. So if you want a pencil on all of your circuit chart, you can. Um, <laughs> there is a dedicated label pack, as I showed you, and the metering kit, if I can get that into focus, uh, fits directly onto the main board. And it tells you to see overleaf overleaf for the um, meter kits. So if we run to the back page, you can see it does give you all of the product weights and dimensions, which is nice. And it tells you about the incomer kits. So you've got your switch disconnectors. And as I mentioned, we're going for a free pole isolator on this one because of the UPS system that's down circuit off this board. Uh, and then you can have your contactors on there, your SPDs. You've got your metering kits. So if this is a board you want to meter set, you don't know why I spun that around there. Um, so you can get your metering kits if you need them. There's your incoming kits again for um, your JK2. So you've got your JK1 and JK2 systems and then your accessories. So any little bits, little bits and pieces you might need. It tells you here that the, it's rated for three phase. So you've got your voltages there and it's different for your insulation voltage. So you must remember that, that it's actually rated 690 volts AC for insulation voltage. That's your UI. Uh, your impulse withstand is 4kV and the assembly as a whole, so that's the JK1 and JK2 systems. Basically JK2 is your 250 and we're using JK1125 on this one. Um, you've then got your outgoing circuits, so your MCBs, you've got down to half an amp, should you wish, all the way up to 63 amp. And again, RCBOs are 6 amp to 50 amp. And the uh, rated conditional short circuit current of the assembly as a whole is 10kA with equipment arrangements specified in Hager's technical documentation catalogue. RCBs and MCBs 10kA rating. Um, you can get these in a 15kA range and then they do comply. So you get some of these MCBs that comply with your 60898s and also your 6... Um, sorry, 60973-2. So they're the, like the split standard. Um, so you often you see that that discussion and debate with your pollution ratings, where obviously your 60898s aren't really suitable for using unhe unheated spaces, whereas your MCCBs are. Um, and you can get these MCBs that comply to both of those British standards. So it's worth checking. I think in the Hager range, it's the 15KA ones. Um, so you need to remember that if you are using these in a... a unheated space, not that you would with this board, and I'll explain why in a sec. And you've got your diversity factors, which it explains there, and I've said this a lot, that it only applies to continuously and simultaneously loaded circuits. And it says here the pollution degree is two. And we'll talk about pollution degrees. But basically, if you're going into um, somewhere... Oh, actually, we'll cover it. We'll get the pollution degrees up, and I'll go through it, because it makes more sense to see it drawn out and explained rather than me just talking about it. It says it can be used on TNCS, TNS and TT and that it's for indoor use. With the door closed it's IP3XD and with it open IP2XC. Um, distribution boards intended to be operated by ordinary persons so this can be controlled by ordinary people and it is an EMC environment B class and it is to be wall mounted surface type enclosed assembly. So you know that's um, just the manual. I like to have a little th look through them just to give you an insight into what these things are supposed to be installed like and again um, your MCCBs where your pollution degree might dictate you need them so if you're in un unheated spaces these boards can help you out but it is to bear in mind the pollution degree rating we'll have a look at that in a second um, just to speak about the the incoming kit as I said I'm using the 
the three pearl isolator here which is actually shown in this diagram so you can see how you get the little linking bars to join on and also the neutral there is just straight through but this is going to be a bit different when we install it because we've got the spd kit i've got this open on the screen here so you can see how that kind of all links together on there so you get a pass through on the neutral basically your incoming cables go into the bottom of that and the main switch then you've got a little buzz bar across the top which joins into the spd and then the SPD is bolted onto the enclosure at the bottom. So it's a really simple solution from Hager that avoids any additional enclosures or messing about with other current protection. And, you know, it's a faff sometimes with SPDs on TPN, and this is a really good solution. So we're going to have one of these on this install too. Um, and, yeah, I thought we'd just run through that. I know it gets a bit boring with some of the manufacturer stuff. So I'll maybe chuck this at the end of the video um, for those of you who are stuck through to watch it and you wanted to have a little look and run through it. hope you found that interesting. Um, if we are moving on with the video and going out to site, let's get ahead and watch it. If this is the end of the video, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it useful. As I say, keep your eye out on some of the more YouTube famous people's um, drops because hopefully there's going to be some of this content on their channel as well. Primarily, we've done this to help their apprentice and give them some experience in the commercial sector. And that was suggested by John Bagley, who is an absolute superstar. Catch you on the next one. So this is about the best I could find to show you that explains the pollution degrees as simply as possible. So degree one is basically no pollution. So essentially that would be a clean room. So if you're in a, a plant room that has been um, installed in a way that it's heated, it's, it's clean and there's no um, pollution or non-conductive pollution, it has no effect. A pollution degree two is normally only non-conductive pollution and temporary condensation is possible and it's electrical assemblies and equipment that you might find in an office laboratory test station. So this is generally what we would be installing our equipment in. Um, and then you can have your pollution degree three. And again, you're going to have conductive and non-conductive pollution present and condensation that's frequent. And this could be in farming areas, unheated rooms, boiler rooms. And this is when you need to be mindful of your MCCBs, so your 60947-2s. Probably got that BS number wrong earlier on. It's just popped into my mind correctly then. Um, it's always a confusion with all these BS numbers. I don't remember them off the top of my head. Quite often get them mixed up. But it is a, a factor to play out if you are in an unheated space. And as I've said before, that is more an issue for colder temperatures. You know, some plant rooms do get really warm and you need to be mindful of the possible nuisance tripping effect you can have if you haven't um, derated your protective devices or rated your protective devices in a way to account for that. But in unheated spaces, it can actually result in danger. So really important you do consider your pollution degrees when you're doing your electrical design. And the pollution degree four is um, basically if you're outside, so it's seen rain or snow. So it's electrical assemblies for outdoor use yeah, or remote stations. An interesting point, because you'll sometimes see, especially with EV installs, people start to install these external consumer units, um, which are fine in terms of IP rating. But are we taking into account some of the factors to do with their um, temperature obviously they're in unheated spaces they're outside um, and then you're going to have all of the issues perhaps with uv if you've got that shining into them warming them up through the, the summer periods as well um, that's not as clear cut as some people would maybe lead themselves to believe um, so be careful of that one would be my best advice you know it can catch you out make sure you do your design carefully i'm not saying you can't install equipment like that in an outside location or in an un unheated space, but just make sure you take account of the derating factors and also the maximum and minimum operating temperatures of the equipment. But yeah, that was just pollution factors. Let's get on with the video. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. This is the board mounted. You'll see we've got it on the Unistrut. This is the SPD kit where we've got the earth link screwed straight into the back of the um, DB itself, the Hager DIN rail which triggers me every time with the writing that's upside down that's all into the top and this is all just loose fit for the time being if you um, watch the YouTube Famous People's video you'll see them installing it and they can talk you through what they're doing that's the neutral link we didn't need because the SBD kit comes with a neutral um, like an MCB size breaker that you just pop in there well it's not a breaker, it's just a connection point where you can wire your neutral in all the fly leads on the RCBOs are just in loose for the minute so we've loose dressed them down the back um, just to suck them out of the way for the minute. They're not going to stay like that. Obviously, we've got to put a load more containment up still. We've got circuits entering a distribution board below this one at the minute. They're all going to get pulled back, adjusted, and moved up into this one. So I'm not quite sure how the final containment's going to come together. We've got a big shutdown window where we're going to do all of that work. 
Um, and rather than build something into position that's not going to end up being right, we're just going to wait and tackle that all as one job. You see we've got a lot swooping around this side of the pillar. They all drop down into the main intake area below, which is part of the main mechanics workshop. This is all going to be enclosed in a, a cupboard area, so we're trying to make it as neat and tidy as possible. Point of note with the Hager board, you'll see the orange trunking at the top. You don't necessarily have to use Paxlin on that because it's got a smooth lip as you drop in. We've chosen to do it primarily so the apprentices who came to help us could have a goat cutting Praxlin. And also just because it ensures if you've got any single insulated cables dropping through, there's going to be no little gaps, even though it's very unlikely there would be. Just good practice, I think. So that's why we still used it. See nice big bolts and washers through onto the unistrut. Some people use the dome head, like pan head screws onto there. Um, for us, that's fine. It's a nice, secure, strong fixing. That's primarily what we were hoping for. And the unistrut frame drops down the back of that wall and bolts onto the steel work. We've also popped some supporting brace just on the front there as well. So this is a plastic cover, which goes over the SPD and main incoming switch, just so it gives a bit of protection to the bitey bits inside there. And um, yeah, that's kind of at the stage now where we're ready to get all of our containment up and bring the final circuits into it at some stage. Front cover on, just so you can see what it all looks like. Obviously, it's not got any of the blanks in. Don't lose these screws. If you are ever working on these boards, the bottom and top plates have these in as well. So if you're taking the top plate out as we have, keep the screws in a little bag somewhere because you will need them at some point in the future without any question. So this is the main intake downstairs. You've got the main isolating switch, which comes off the incoming service supply. It splits across to an MCCB panel board at the other side of this room, actually, and then comes back to that three-phase board. It's a bit of a mess. It's all exposed out in the workshop. We're not happy with it like that. So we're going to put an MCCB panel board near the main switch on this side of the wall and then obviously we can take our trunking and containment up to that new board as one of the sub boards and then all of the existing steel wire armors for the other sub boards are going to be long enough as well to make connection into that so it'll all tidy up quite nicely and give everything a bit better protection so i hope that made some sense in the way it came together it is a bit of a higgledy piggledy one because it's going to be on somebody else's channel as well and i'll pop a little clip of them right at the end of this video so you can see who it is if you haven't guessed already uh, obviously we've still got loads of work to do there we've got lots of containment to get up to sort all of the cabling out coming into that new board the new mccb panel board needs to go up there is loads and loads of things we are doing in that place and um, yeah that was just a, a nice day to put together to give that apprentice a bit of an opportunity to come and do things they've never done before. So working on some steel containment, Paxilin, SPD, three-phase breakers, RCBOs. Uh, we actually had a really good couple of days as well. Lots of other bits of work getting done in the background also. And we're hoping to do some more of that in the future. Hoping those guys come back and work with us on this job a little bit more. Um, but yeah, that's where we're up to. Like I say, the area at the main intake, that's in the main workshop itself. And they are st storing oil and other bits and pieces all around the electrical equipment and systems. And it just made sense to try and get all of that out of the way somewhere else. Um, obviously, we've got our cupboard going in upstairs. We can move the MCTB panel board to around the other side of that wall and try and make sure we're getting that enclosed. And obviously in the downstairs area of the workshop, speaking of the pollution factors, that's all an unheated space. So that's why we've got the MCCBs to help with your um, selectivity issues and also to make sure that you're giving the right components, the right degree of pollution protection, important to do. Um, but yeah, we'll end that video there. If you have any questions or comments, drop them below. There's gonna be more building on this install. I'm not just gonna leave it there. I'll show you how that board gets dressed away very much a work in progress. I realized the bolts into the top entry um, where the tray is connected in are far too long, so we'll be shortening those. Uh, there is a brass bolt up there as well, actually. I should mention that we do have a brass bolt in for the earth connection too. But we'll cover that as we dress the board up. This was just a case of get it together, see how all of that fits and works. And um, yeah, that's where we're up to. Thank you all for watching. I will catch up with you on another video soon.